So I'm here today in the purple room and I've got a little bit of a goofball example to demonstrate why airflow um, matters and the ability to breathe well matters um, because there is a mechanical component to it that will influence uh, movement patterns, posture, pain, uh, as well as performance. So I have a big balloon and a little balloon. And this is to demonstrate the fact that, that I may not inflate my lungs equally because of pattern movement or habitual activities or whatever influence it may be. But let's just say that my right lung is only filled this much and my left lung is only filled this much because of our rib cage position. So I'm gonna put this under each arm. And if I were to try to side bend, I'm gonna bump into the balloons. But you can see that on my bigger balloon side, which would be the more inflated side, I can't bend as well as I can going to the right because my balloons are bigger. So this would be my underinflated lung and this would be my hyperinflated lung. So if I don't move air back and forth between the two sides very well, I'm gonna limit my ability to side bend, I'm gonna limit my ability to rotate. And so what I wanna teach people to do is to make sure that they can exhale. <laughs> Yes, the sound is still funny. So if I can teach them to exhale on one side, then I'll be able to increase movement in that direction. So instead of trying to drive thoracic spine mobility so hard um, in rotation or in side bending, perhaps we just need to concentrate a little bit more on breathing patterns and exhalation and effective inhalation from a position of exhalation. Um, so try to keep that in mind before you start you know, driving hard mobility exercises that, that may not even be beneficial for your client.